This art by the book review is Drawing Wildlife by J.C. Amberlin. So you want to draw and paint wildlife, or maybe you already do. You won't be good enough. You'll never be good enough. If you do get good enough, you might be cheating. Be prepared for countless hours of sketching. Like skulls and fur. You'll also have to find a reservoir of reference photos. The most important thing is a great wildlife drawing and painting Bible. I found this one. It's by J.C. Amberlin. And the step-by-step -step from inside the book I'm going to use to review this book is actually the buck on the cover. Here's her signature. And first off, I think it's pretty great that she gives us a step-by-step -step of something she signs her name to. The thing that makes this a Bible instead of a book is that it gives you the information you need as a wildlife artist. You might not know the difference between black bears and brown bears, but you know you can find it on page 75 through 88. Contents gives you some idea of what a Bible this is. It's divided into carnivores and omnivores, hooved mammals, and small mammals. And if you seriously want to learn to draw and paint wildlife, this is the reference book you must have in your studio in case you run out of reference photos. It teaches how to draw the animal organically from what you want to paint. If you want to paint the bear catching a fish, You'll know how the bear moves and how many claws it has, all those kinds of things. The brown bear's tail versus the black bear's tail. And how to draw from simple shapes, like this gray squirrel. I'm going to review this book with a step-by-step -step of how to draw the mule deer buck. Let's begin and see if I can end up with something sort of like this by the end of the art demonstration. Get out a basic drawing pencil, an eraser, and some colored pencils if you want to draw along with me. Another artist teaches to draw the buck from a basic mushroom shape. Start by drawing a circle in the middle of the page, which will be the buck's head. A halo for the antlers. This will be the mushroom base. Mushroom top, a half circle. I'm going to use this as my half circle and outline it. Okay, now the lines to the side of the head for the mushroom stem. Slightly tilted to the right and bigger than the head. About right here. Like Banjo, 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 how long we won't go. The oval like an egg. One more circle inside the lines. And now put a, an eye line in for the buck's eyes right about here on the head circle. Okay, so slim the sides of the head, put in a T shape. So right here and right here. And then a circle for the muzzle and define the nose and eyes. So here's another T shape kind of thing and the circle for the muzzle. And this bottom circle is the bottom of the muzzle, top of the muzzle. It says to find the nose and eyes, and it's a little bit unclear here, but it looks like these big shapes here, and then we'll make them smaller. And it says to measure the head width and mark it off for the ears, and it's about at a, they're about at a 45 or actually a little bit less angle, so that's how long the ear is going to be. Looks like they connect at the eye line. And it looks like it's just inside the mushroom, so if you have to adjust, I had to adjust my mushroom, but it looks like it's, they go to about here, and that's one head width. And it connects here, the eye line. Okay, 
so these are the, it says to block in earbuds, so that's there and there, I guess. It's going to come out of the eye, and then the eye, I guess, would be blocked in here. Now I know these are called earbuds. Make two arcs above the, the connection of the ear. Outer tip, it says, is a flattened curve. So we'll just go kind of straight here and then a curve. Straight here and then a curve. All the information step two gave me but let me show you where she is in the book she's here so she does put in the antlers and some guides for the things about the buck so I'll just follow along and try to get in as much detail as she has so far this is where you can really use the genius of the mushroom shaped guideline two front tines run along the halo that was made with a fork tine along the outer edge of the mushroom cap the two points of the receding antler tines also end along the mushroom cap shape. Okay, so I drew an even horn on the other side, which I don't think two horns are even either, like a butterfly's wing. And then there's a line here under the chin to mark the chest. And then there's this oval that kind of interrupts this circle here down to one of the lines you have as the guides. And it's kind of egg-shaped right there and down around here. So that's a little wide. So I think it's going to come up to the edge of the eye there. Now this side at the edge of the eye is like a little half circle arc thing, another arc down to here. And they said she's, the author says the next bulge when they're breeding. So she, this is a breeding buck, she said. During breeding season they have a bulging neck. How attractive, huh? The next step is to clean up some of the guidelines that you have used to sketch in the buck. The nostrils, nose, and muzzle fall within the second T-shape, the inner T-shape that was made. On to step three. This is step three. Finalize the drawing, finish up the antlers, add definition to the eyes. I added a tear to the buck's ear to indicate that he's lived a little. I cleaned up my lines, but it's amazing how much of this actually goes into the real drawing. Like this here. This is also helpful here. Kind of shows where this starts. and then down to the side of this line here. So, up, straight down, in. So the pupil looks sort of like a ghost, sort of straight across at this moment. So now you see what I mean. This author artist teaches you to draw without having to use a reference photo. It's kind of nice to get off the reference photo treadmill for a while. Okay, so I'm cleaning up some of my lines, and it seems like this line right under the chin is not there. It just kind of comes in like this, shadowed, and then out. Okay, now this 
suggestion is to transfer the drawing to a different sheet of paper for colored pencil. I'm just going to add my colored pencil to this piece here. The next step is to realize that the light is coming from the right side, so the antlers on the left side, or the viewer's right, would be darkened, so darken the line. And then with a dark brown pencil, begin filling in some space, keeping hair direction in mind. that if you remember the mushroom and the tea, it's, this part is coming forward, there's more contrast, more dark to light. To review this book, of course you probably know by now I don't take up both of our time with books that I don't like. So of course this is a five star book, but I'm not joking around, it really is a five star book. And if you are going to be a wildlife artist, it's it's a necessary tool. It's as necessary as your pencil some, for some people to have a book like this in your studio. Depending on you know who you have as family and friends, you know, you know if people that that go to your shows know that a mule deer has a black tip tail or a white tip tail or how many claws a bear has. It's very important to have, but also because you know of her genius. Like she, I. In the step-by-step, step, I, I think step one to step two is a bit of a jump. I mean, you really have to look at her drawing. But when she too. says, trust me, like drawing the mushroom to draw the buck, it, it really does work out. So I have a feeling that, uh, you know, the step one to step two is also asking you just to, to look, really look at other wildlife art, and, you know, that's also going to help your drawing. Thank you for watching, and happy wildlife drawing and painting. Anyone who bought this book could draw this buck? Yes, I do. That's why I signed mine. I heart J.C. Amberlin. Once again, the book is called Drawing Wildlife by J.C. Amberlin. Click on the button to subscribe for more art by the book suggestions and reviews.